Hi, my name is David Zhang and I'm a tester on the Microsoft Hadoop team. In this video, I'll introduce you to the interactive JavaScript console on Windows Hadoop. So I'm going to start by going to the Hadoop on Azure site and signing myself in. And I provision a cluster earlier, so it's going to bring me back to cluster. And now I'm going to click on the interactive console. So ideally, you should see this screen inside the portal. So now what you see is basically an interactive console that is sitting on top of your Hadoop cluster. It's powered by JavaScript and we have a bunch of commands on in your browser. And this is in this video, we're going to do a quick walkthrough of all these features. This is a simple console. So it's, it's running JavaScript and it's running inside your browser. So it evaluates uh, simple JavaScript expressions. It also lets you run file system commands, HDFS commands, as if you were on command console. So if you type hash and then you type a file system command, we're actually now sending the ls command to the HDFS. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, run a, a simple word count example and we're going to look at find the top 10 uh, most common words in the Gutenberg samples that come installed with the Hadoop on Windows installation. So we're going to start by writing a MapReduce program in, as a JavaScript script. What I have here is a notepad and I have some pre-prepared script that I'm going to paste in here. So what you can see is that this is a very simple MapReduce script uh, where you have, you have the, the mapper and the reducer defined as functions. And what all, but this is basically doing uh, the, the, the word count example where the map is looking at the words in the corpus and emitting ones for each distinct word in the corpus. And the reduce is basically just summing up all those ones for each of the words to give you a word count. It's the standard word count example, but it now it's written in JavaScript, which keeps the program a lot cleaner. So we're going to save this as a file, wordcount.js. What we're going to do now is upload this file to the HDFS. To do that, there is a command on the interactive JavaScript console, and it's called put. So if we do fs put, what this does is it brings up a dialog where we can select the file that we saved. And we press upload. OK, so as you can see, that the file is now uploaded. And if we run ls again, we see that the file is now actually on the HDFS. So what we're going to do next, also upload the, the Gutenberg examples onto the HDFS. And we do that by first, I'm going to make a directory on the HDFS called Gutenberg. And then I'm going to upload the Gutenberg, which is in here. So I'm going to upload these files. And unfortunately, because the browser only allows you to upload one file at a time, uh, we have to do this three times. Now, the good thing about this is that um, you can, just like a normal console, you can press up to get to the previous command. So there's less typing involved there. And so we're going to select each of the Gutenberg files and upload it into the Gutenberg directory that we just created. OK, so now the three files are uploaded. Um, now we can take a look at what's happened is that now we have the word count JavaScript uploaded. And also, we've created the Gutenberg directory. And if we look at the Gutenberg directory, we see the three files uploaded. And we can have a look at the word count JavaScript that we uploaded is pretty much what we typed on the notepad. So the next thing we're going to do is that we're going to use the Gutenberg files as input and run the JavaScript uh, MapReduce program on it. But we're going to do this in such a way that we also order it by order the, the, the word count that we get descendingly and then take the top 10. And we can do this by using a query. And so we say, taking uh, input from the Gutenberg directory, let's run MapReduce using the word count JavaScript. And we have to specify the output schema of this. And we're going to say the, uh, two columns. The first column is called word. And the second column is called count, which is of type long. And then we're going to order by count and descending. And then we're going to take the top 10. Oops. And then we're going to store the results in a folder called GB top 10. So we can press shift and click on the view log link, which will open a new browser window. So a lot happened there. I'm pulling the logs from pig as the pig script is executing. So what, what's actually happening is that we've translated the query that you typed in the console um, into a set of pig queries. And, that, and what pig does in the background is that it translates those pig queries into a set of MapReduce jobs. And it's now running each of those jobs on the uh, Hadoop cluster. And as it's doing that, obviously it's gener it's generating some output to um, standard to the standard output, and we are actually capturing that and bringing it back to the browser. Okay, so 
So now the peak, the peak job is complete and you can see that it's success. If we do another ls, we can see that GB top 10, which was the uh, output directory that we specify, is now in the HDFS. And if we look at what's inside GB top 10, you see it's a very familiar part R0000 file, um, which is a very standard, standard sort of naming scheme that MapReduce uses. And we can actually have a look at what is inside this file if we use cat and you see now basically these the top 10 most common words in the Gutenberg text have been found along with the actual count so as expected that is the most common word in in the corpus with 47,430 occurrences so now what we can do now that now that we have these results in the HDFS we can read the read these results back out into our JavaScript console and we can do that by saying let me fs.read is a function that we provide for you to do that and we can say uh, read from the directory gbtop10 and if we don't specify any files it basically reads all the files um, in that directory and concatenates them into one string so we do that and you see now that it, it shows the same thing so what's actually happened is that now file is kind of uh, is a variable that stores the file that's being read and to actually get at the data we we can do file.data which actually has has that has that data in there um, but right now this data is is a, is a string and but we can, we can actually turn this into a set of javascript objects we have a uh, a parse function for that so we can say data is let me parse the file data and what we what we give it is a schema string and you notice that the schema string is exactly the same as the schema string that we used before so we're saying that the data that we're reading actually is, is actually two columns the first column we're going to call word and the second column is called count and it's also of type long and if, basically the, the first column we don't specify a type and it defaults to string so when we do that now what actually happens is that now we have a JavaScript uh, array um, of 10 elements where each, each, each element is a JavaScript object with two properties. The first property is called word and it's got, uh, it's got the string and the second property is called count and it's got the integer value of the count. And so this is actually now, if we look at what, what um, data is, it's actually a, um, a JavaScript array and it has all the standard JavaScript things that JavaScript arrays come with. The good thing about this is that now we can push this into our graphing functions because our graphing functions can take a JavaScript array with a schema of this data and what we get is a bar graph of the top 10 words in the Gutenberg examples. This bar graph is made using SVG which is a new HTML5 feature and if we click on this graph we will actually open it in a new window and we can do all sorts of things with it like we can we can resize it and it will resize because it's using SVG and we can also copy save the picture if we wanted to as an SVG or as a PNG and we can also copy copy the picture and we can paste it into another program like paint or PowerPoint so that's the end of the demo and thanks for watching